Now let's work on a more comprehensive example and I'm going to use Excel spreadsheet to work on this uh, example. And this, th this is the data for an investment. We are going to have the investments of $50,000 and $80,000 at the present time and year one. We are going to have the revenues of $100,000, $90,000 and $80,000 at year two, three and four. And operating cost is going to be constant and $30,000 from year two to year four. We are going to consider the escalation rate of 8% for the capital cost and 12% for uh, operating cost and 10% of escalation for the revenues. Let's calculate the rate of return and NPV for this investment and uh, calculate the escalated dollar cash flow. So because we have uh, different uh, escalation rates for our costs and revenue, we need to separate, the, uh, we need to keep them separate. Uh, present time uh, capital cost uh, will not be affected by the escalation rate. The $80,000 of capital uh, cost at, the, at year one uh, has to be uh, compounded with 8% and the compounding period is one. The $100 uh, revenue at year two has to be compounded by 10% and the uh, uh, compounding period is two. Uh, the operating cost at year two has to be compounded by 12% and uh, compounding period is two and so on. Payments are going to be three and compounding period is going to be four here. Uh, the, the escalation rate for revenue is 10% and escalation rate for operating cost is 12%. And the result. So in order to calculate the rate of return, we uh, write the equation for uh, the rate of return, present value of cost equals present value of revenue, present value of costs equals uh, present value of all capital cost and operating cost that we have here, uh, and present value of uh, in, uh, income uh, equals the present value of revenue at year two, three, and four. Uh, we could also make a summation over each column considering the negative sign for costs and uh, calculate the uh, escalated dollar cash flow and write the rate of return equation for that. Both of them are the same. Uh, and we solve the equation for I. And we calculate the rate of return, the, the escalated dollar cash flow rate of return as 26.24%. So because this, uh, the calculated rate of return for this project is higher than 15% escalated dollar minimum rate of return, we can conclude that this project is economically satisfactory. So uh, we can also calculate the NPV for this project. Uh, NPV equals uh, present value of all costs, uh, considering the 15% of escalated do dollar minimum rate of return, uh, considering the negative sign plus the present value of revenue, uh, uh, considering 15% of escalated dollar minimum rate of return. Uh, so we calculate the NPV as uh, $28,000 and 937. So uh, because this NPV is positive, we can conclude that this project is uh, economically satisfactory. So let me open uh, the Excel spreadsheet and work on this example. So these are the information for this uh, investment. These are costs. First two ones are capital cost and the other three are operating costs. As you can see, escalation rates are different. And here the income. So uh, now I'm going to calculate the escalated uh, dollar. So for the uh, for the payment, which is the capital cost at present time, uh, which will not be affected by the escalation rate. So it is going to be the, the same payment. Uh, escalated dollar cost at uh, year one. 
can be calculated by uh, compounding this $80,000 uh, by 8% and for one year compounding period. So it equals $80,000 multiply 1 plus 8% power 1. So this is escalated dollar cost at year one and I can apply it to the other cells. For example, the last year, uh, which is going to be an operating cost, uh, has, to, has to be compounded by 12% of escalation rate and four compounding periods. F1, which reads it from here. And then I'm going to calculate the escalated dollar income for our uh, three incomes in year two to year four. So escalated uh, dollar income of $100,000 equals $100,000 multiply one plus 10% power two because we are going to have two compounding periods and I applied that to the other revenues. And now I'm going to calculate the escalated dollar cash flow, which is going to be the revenue, the escalated dollar uh, income revenue minus uh, the escalated uh, dollar cost. I don't have any revenue at uh, present time, so it will be zero, but I have to write that minus the cost and I apply this to the other years. So this is going to be my escalated dollar cash flow. I'm going to calculate the escalated dollar NPV because I have a payment at present time, I have to enter that manually and then use the NPV function for the rest. Uh, the rate was 15% and uh, And then I will choose the cash flow, the rest of the cash flow. So this is the escalated dollar NPV and the rate of return. I use the IRR function. I choose the entire cash flow and I enter a guess, which I just gives it 10% and 26.24% is the escalated dollar rate of return. So this is the escalated dollar cash flow that we just calculated. Now let's consider inflation rate of 6% per year for this escalated dollar cash flow and let's calculate the constant dollar cash flow and then after let's calculate rate of return and NPV for constant dollar cash flow. In order to calculate the constant dollar cash flow, we need to discount each payment by uh, the inflation rate, 6% of in inflation rate, considering the discounting period. For example, the escalated dollar of $86,400 uh, at year one has to be discounted by 6% and the discounting uh, period, which is going to be one and so on for year two uh discounting period is two six percent interest rate in inflation rate and so on and the result so this is going to be our uh constant dollar cash flow uh we write the rate of return equation and we solve the equation for i and we calculate the constant dollar uh, rate of return as 19.09%. Now let's calculate the NPV for constant dollar cash flow. But very important thing here is what rate should be used to calculate the NPV for constant dollar cash flow. We know that the escalated dollar minimum rate of return is 15%. But we cannot use the escalated dollar minimum rate of return for constant dollar NPV calculations. So what should we do here? 
we can use the Fisher equation to convert the escalated dollar minimum rate of return into the constant dollar minimum rate of return using the inflation rate. So here is the Fisher equation. Uh, the, this 15% is the escalated dollar minimum rate of return and 6% interest rate. The result is going to be 8.49%, which is going to be the constant dollar minimum rate of return. This is the rate that we have to use for calculating our, uh, our uh, constant dollar NPV. So we use the constant dollar uh, minimum rate of return of 8.49% to calculate the NPV of uh, constant dollar cash flow. And this is the NPV of uh, constant dollar cash flow. And you can see because this is positive, we can conclude the project is economically satisfactory. We calculated the constant dollar rate of return as 19.09% and we need to compare this with the constant dollar minimum rate of return of 8.49% 8 that we just calculated and because this rate of return is higher than this minimum rate of return we can also uh, conclude that this project is economically satisfactory. Now let me open the Excel spreadsheet again. So this is the escalated dollar cash flow. And we are going to consider the 6% of inflation rate for this uh, escalated dollar cash flow. And then we have to calculate the constant uh, dollar cash flow. In order to, to calculate the constant dollar cash flow, we need to discount each payment by 6% and the discounting period. So, so we can uh, leave it as uh, the as it is fifty thousand dollars of uh, costs. But this escalated dollar cash flow has to be discounted by one plus six percent power discounting period. And then I can apply this to the other uh, years. So for example, the last year, uh, uh, constant dollar cash flow in the, the last year equals the escalated dollar uh, divided by one plus inflation rate power the year. Now let's calculate the constant dollar NPV. But in order to calculate the constant dollar NPV, we need the constant dollar minimum rate of return. How do I calculate that? I will use the Fisher equation, uh, escalated dollar minimum rate of return and the inflation rate to calculate the constant dollar minimum rate of return. So constant dollar minimum rate of return or I prime star equals uh, 1 plus 15 percent which was uh, escalated dollar minimum rate of return divided by 1 plus inflation rate 6 percent minus 1 which equals 8.49 percent so this 8.49 is the constant dollar minimum rate of return that I can use to calculate the constant dollar NPV. So I have the constant dollar cash flow here. I have the constant dollar minimum rate of return here. And I can calculate the constant dollar NPV. So uh, the payment at a present time, I should enter, I have to enter that manually, plus NPV function. The rate is constant dollar minimum rate of return and uh, the rest of the constant dollar cash flow. So because this NPV is positive, I can conclude that uh, the constant dollar 
uh, cash flow the project with this constant dollar cash flow is a good project to invest and let's calculate the constant dollar rate of return which is uh, fairly straightforward IRR function I choose the constant dollar cash flow I give it a guess 10% and this is the constant dollar rate of return which is 19.09 percent and because this constant dollar rate of return is higher than constant dollar minimum rate of return i can conclude that this project is uh, economically satisfactory in terms of rate of return so you can also use the fisher rule to calculate the constant dollar rate of return keep it in your mind it's it's a very good double check uh, method to make sure your final result is correct so we have the constant we have the escalated dollar rate of return here we have the inflation rate of six percent so with these two i should be able to calculate the constant dollar rate of return using the fisher rule so let's see so the constant dollar rate of return using the Fisher equation is uh, 1 plus escalated dollar rate of return divided by 1 plus inflation rate of 6% minus 1. And it should give me the exact same value as this rate of return that I calculated here. As you can see, I um, it will be the same. 